suppose as, as we're in lockdown too, Margaret Thatcher did say, I think, that sometimes you have to fight the battle twice. So uh, maybe we'll get some more ammo from today. I would like to thank our um, esteemed panel. And rather, rather than cover some of the stuff Gary just did, I'm going to give you some background on these individuals, um, many of whom you will know. So I'm going to start with uh, Fraser Nelson. Fraser is the editor of The Spectator and a columnist for The Daily Telegraph. Seasoned journalist who throws a fascinating light over the dynamics of Westminster. And he's also a member of the advisory board of the Centre of Social Justice and Centre Politics Studies. Uh, we have our science expert in the room. We have Dr. Mike Yeadon, uh, who again, many of you may know from some of my posts. Um, Dr. Yeadon has a BSc in biochemistry and toxicology and a PhD in respiratory pharmacology. He's the ex chief scientific officer and VP of Pfizer. He's also published over 40 original research articles and since 2011 has consulted with more than 20 biotechnology companies. Uh, James Barber Smith, again, very well known to uh, those who were in S3, because he was once a board member there. James is currently the chairman and board advisor to a number of UK businesses, uh, most of which are focused on rapid overseas expansion. He's the ex head of portfolio management at Gresham Private Equity, a mid market UK focused PE business. Uh, where he was involved with over 50 businesses in his 16 year career, ranging from education to manufacturing. And last but not least, uh, Meron Somerset Webb, who you will all know, friend of the Pirates, uh, chief editor of Money Week, FT columnist, and Ibiza show opener. Meron, um, thank you again. Brilliant as ever. Could, go on, 90 seconds. What, what's, what's next? What should we expect? And what do you think we should all be doing? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Okay, ready? The, 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 the phrase of 2020. You're, you're on mute. <laughs> you're on mute. Um, what you should be looking for from here is continued fiscal stimulus. There is no, there is no appetite at all, uh, whatever happens next, for anybody to pull back from any spending, not the people in power, not the people opposing them. So you have to expect ongoing fiscal stimulus. And as I said before, the merging of monetary and fiscal policy, which in the end, I can't see anything to happen except for that leading to higher inflation and inside all businesses you need to be ready for that can i just ask the, mm -hmm. what things would impact a business if if inflation starts to get no super inflation what what, what, what things should we be mindful of well, your costs, <laughs> you know, your okay. costs and your market power. I mean, it's a it's okay. a great time to, we discussed this earlier, to, to restructure so you have the, you know, the correct, the correct finance um, in place, for example. I mean, the last thing you want is to be a, a very high debt com company going into something like this. You want to be sure that you have more equity financing than debt financing. You want to be sure that you can maintain your margins in the face of rising prices and falling consumer confidence. You know, it, it's, it's, I mean, I've talked a lot about the, the V and the pent-up demand, and I believe very strongly that we will see this when we come out. Of course, that's dependent on government policy. Remember that everything that I say about positivity in the future is dependent on government policy. The V and the W are always in the gift of the government, and in this case, of course, in the gift of SAGE. Um, and if you don't get the vaccine coming through that gives everyone the excuse to back back off from their silly policies, then you're not going to get your V. Uh, so that's all okay. government dependent, I think it's important to say. What next? Um, is this going to go on forever? Um, are we going to have a, another sort of 21 that's going to look similar to this? And what, what might you say to business leaders? How can we align ourselves to, to do the best for ourselves in the country going forward? Um, um, what next is that lockdown will be replaced by something similar. Boris Johnson is trying to think his way out of his trap, but it's quite difficult for him. He basically needs help. I think the bigger risk isn't so much COVID. I think the vaccine will come along uh, for that. But I think what we've really discovered the last few months is not COVID. What we've discovered is a completely new way that mankind reacts to new pathogens. As Mike said, we swim in a sea of viruses, but now we've got the technology to find new ones, to give them a name, to track their process right around the world. Coronavirus will not be the last. If we've not got the technology, we're facing a crisis of awareness, not so much a virus itself. So the question is when the next one comes along, as come it will, are we going to keep doing this time and time again? Has technology, the phrase of 2020 certainly is, you're on mute. 
but that also means people have technology that allows them to think of a lockdown as an option. This time last year, nobody would have thought it was. We've all discovered to our amazement that technology allows more of economic life to go on from home, and that therefore has created locking down, trying to run and hide from the virus as an option. So we will repeat, not of coronavirus, but of something else. What businesses can do is just try to make your arguments um, heard. Uh, my email is fraser at spectator.co.uk. If anyone on this call has got, has got things which they've seen, studies they don't think haven't been promoted, let me know and I'll do my best to raise awareness. But do what you can to make your case, to put it in the public domain and just put things there for others to come and and pluck and weave together and take arguments. We, you know, The great thing about the media now is it doesn't have to be left to journalists. Anybody can put up an online analysis, anybody can put up facts from their own business that will help give the balancing impact the government badly needs. If it's trying to think how to do this again when the next time comes, I suspect it will come before too long. Same question to you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> what, that would be, what, what, what's the next, what can we do? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, just in terms of the phrase of the year, actually, apart from you're on mute, is this doesn't make sense. I've heard it from thousands of people, and of course it doesn't. So, uh, for a phrase, you might be right. We've got this kind of crisis of not knowing quite how to cope. I personally think this crisis was manufactured. That is, people decided to be frightened about something that was just, really just happens all the time, and we just don't think about it. Uh, probably a little bit worse than that, because 40,000 people died in the spring. So, but my, so my one piece of advice, and you, honestly, it's worth what you paid for it, but I, would, I sincerely, I offer it sincerely, that the fact that 50% of us are, were already immune before the virus arrived, 25% of you believe even Public Health England, that's a big step forward from SAGE's zero, um, which they maintain to this day. Uh, and the fact that herd immunity was reached in weeks, you can just look at the data, it's very clear. What that tells you is humans are really good at getting immune to this virus. So that means you don't really need a vaccine. You certainly don't need a vaccine to terminate a pandemic because it terminated in May or June. So that's the thing. So what? then the next thing I would say is... I do think some vulnerable and old people uh, probably should consider this vaccine you know, with informed consent. Um, uh, uh, but I would strongly urge all of you to go, wait a minute, if you hear any such talk about rolling the vaccine out, mass vaccination campaigns, frighten the crap out of me because most people are already immune. We can test for this. And the majority that aren't, unless they're already over 70 and already ill, are not at risk from the virus. Why the hell would you want to take a vaccine? Now, I'm, a, I'm an ex-big pharma guy. I spent all my career, apart from a bit of time in biotech, when I sold that to a big pharma. I've spent my entire life around big pharma. I'm a science guy. I'm pro-vaccine. I've had them all. All my children have had them all. I've talked to my... Uh, daughter about her grandchild, and my grandson, about vaccines and oppose with all your might mass vaccine rollouts. They're not necessary, really spooky. Sir, same question. Right. Um, I think for me, it's going to be continued political confusion um, over the, the next number of months. Um, but as we go into next year, whether we need the vaccine or not, and whether we have the vaccine or not, the vaccine and the, the um, having it will mean things open up and start to start to recover. And I think for this audience and your pirates here, it's it's very simple for me. Ignore the outside world. Um, you know, focus on business efficiency. For God's sake, manage your cash and keep a very tight control on that. And then be brave. Be opportunistic. Love that. Yeah. Always be brave.